gimp.org. Gimp.org. Okay. Gimp.org. And that will take you, when you do gimp.org, it'll take you to this wonderful page. And you need to download, and now it should tell you already that it is for your Mac computer or your Windows, depending on what you are working on now. So you just click on download GIMP and install it on your computer. Takes you to there, do the orange one. Do the orange one. Somebody want me? I heard a little murmur come through on my sound. Hang on. Okay. I turned my sound up. Everybody, Kajay May? Easy? Click the orange or the green? The orange one. Okay. Okay. Now, I've got my GIMP open. I just want you to get a picture that I've got on my website. So I'll share the screen and log into brettwilkin.com. The best website on the internet. Yay. Not many yays out there. I thought there would at least be at least one yay for 5% extra marks for. Yay. Oh, who was that? 5% marks. Damn me. Right, okay. Don't forget to remind me when I'm doing your your marks. M2, S2, GIMP. Okay, I think you should have that there. No editing. Now this is the, um, the page. You should all be able to see this page, but what I want you to do is download the image in, under old lady it's not the old lady image, it's the one underneath, the, the uh, Pokemon. Okay, we're just gonna do a little bit of selecting and deleting in, in GIMP. Um, okay, so just right click, um, save image as, and download it to your computer. In GIMP, when you've got it, you, you're using it, you can actually just copy image anywhere and paste it into GIMP, but I won't do that today. Just save image as. Now, sometimes when you load GIMP, sometimes you have this happening. Okay, sometimes it looks like that. And in actual fact, I'm sharing my middle screen and my, my tools are on the outside. You can't see them. But when that happens, you put the toolboxes close on either side and then go Windows, Single Window Mode. Single Window Mode. And then your toolboxes will join back onto your... Um, to your window. Another thing that happens is, I think it's the tab. Sometimes you accidentally hit tab. If you hit tab again, your toolboxes come back. Now I'm going to select again around my picture. Um, I'm going to just tell me if you want me to slow down or do something again. I have my headphones on, but if you speak, clearly or loudly, I'm bound to hear you. Okay, so what I want to do now is make my selection because I want to use this picture for something else in somewhere else. So I don't want the background, I just want the picture. So, <coughs> so I go to selection tools, hold my mouse down, 
GIMP. Okay. Get the scissors. Scissors select. And now I'm going to go around my object with the scissors select. I'm just clicking the mouse. You would tap your mouse pad with your finger to do this. On this image, if you just select close to the black line, maybe on the back line, it should follow the curve a little bit. And that one nearly popped back out from the right spot. I say there's a lot better ways of doing this, but you need to know the basics uh, before we go too much further because it's too hard to to do without understanding it. There we go. We're going up to my thing and I'm going to go enter. That one's okay. I've entered it and I've got marching ants going all around my edge. A couple of places where I can tidy it up, but I don't don't need to. I'm not going to, not with this. As I say, I'm going to show you a, a, a furry edge, a feather edge tool, which feathers the edges, makes it look smooth. Okay, so I've got my pasted layer. I've got my marching ants. I'm going to go control C. Control V. Now I have over on the right in my layers, I have over here a floating selection. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do with a floating selection. Um, we're just, I'm just uh, going through the basics at the moment. So the easiest way for you, um, besides double click, which makes it a pasted layer, um, is to right click and go to new layer. Okay, but you can just double click it. I didn't show you that before. Okay, now if I switch my background off, right, you can see we have a background now that's by itself. I've selected the pasted layer, right, which is the image. I've selected that. Now I'm going to go back to my selection tool, magic wand or fuzzy select tool, they call it. And I'm going to click on that. And it should be, if I click on the, on the, uh, image here I'm clicking on the, the, the space where there's no color and between the marching ants and the image so what I'm doing is just picking the background of that layer now I'll need to make sure over here that if I'm at that stage where is it I've lost it no I have this button on because I want to select more than one thing. All right, so I'm going to go here. I need to have that button on, not these other ones. Okay. Right, with the fuzzy select tool now, I can select each one of these spaces beside the picture. All right, now I've selected the spaces all there. So what I've got again is marching ants going around the edge of the image. 
All right. Now, what I want to do is make that sharp edge, the sharp edge there, I want to blend that in. I don't want it to be sharp because I want to make it look like it's part of a new picture. So we we've got to trick people by feathering the edge. It's called feathering. So if I zoom in, two finger click, I've got my selection. You can see the marching ants. Now I'm going to go up to select and I'm going to go feather and I think I'll select about five to start with. Sometimes it depends on how big your picture is, um, which number you select there. So for every picture, it's slightly different. I think five should give me some feather. So I'll go okay. All right. Now, remember, I've got an edge selected and then I've selected feather. Once again, there's lots of ways of doing this. So I've selected feather. Now I'm going to just hit delete. Now you look at the edge on my zoom. You look at the edge carefully. See how the edge is going opacity, see-through. Right. I keep clicking my delete. You can see that edge slowly starting to disappear. Now that's how a picture normally is. So when I put something behind that, it will actually make it look as though it's part of the real picture or of another picture. So I've got a feathered edge. Five seemed to be a good number for that, five pixels. You can experiment. And if you're not happy, you can control Z or command Z to go back. I'll have a look at my picture full size now. You can see how I've got a little bit of a gap from where my selection was. Okay. I've actually got a picture of one of my ex students here. That will do me. If I drag and drop the picture into the window, it should come in as a new layer. So I've got my picture here and I'm going to drag and drop and drop it on the screen. Okay, now my picture is very big. So I'm going to have to size it to fit. Okay, as you can see, when I zoom out, I can't see my whole picture. So what I'm going to do is scale the picture. There's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, Make sure you're selected on your new picture. I'll make sure I've got my picture. I'm going to right click on my layer picture and I'm going to uh, scale layer. I'll just leave that there for a moment so you, you can read it. Scale layer. Right click on layer, the layer that I want to scale and just go uh, right click. Scale layer. Right. It's locked together, so I'm just going to go on the big picture here. I'm about, oh, I might just put number in. I'll uh, put 450, see what it looks like. Scale. Okay. Now there's my picture. All right. Now, oh, I don't know. I think that picture could be a little bit bigger. Control A. Um, I had trouble before because I forgot to um, none control sh uh, shift control A to get rid of my selection, which made it do a little bit funny. But, okay, so now I've got my image. I'm going to select scale. I might just go up a little bit on the scale. Zoom a little. Uh, move it a little bit. That'll do me. Scale, top right here. Notice we've got the word scale here. Now that's where it is on mine. It might be in a different place to you, but what we're doing is looking at this little box and we're going to click on the word scale. Uh, 
Okay, scale. There is my student, young Paul. Now, notice I can't see anything else. Four is on the top. And that's because when I go over to the side over here with the uh, layers, it's because poor is the one on top, on the top layer. But I don't want her on the top. I want her in, on one of the bottom layers. So I come over to my layers and I look down under and I see two little triangles or two little uh, chevrons they are. Um, I just grab my drawer again and show you what I mean. This, these two little things here. All right, now, they will move the selected layer. So, poor is selected. She's the layer selected. I can move her down. As I move her down, have a look at what my picture does. All right, now I have my image on top. But also, notice how the edges are being feathered so it blends in to the picture quite well all right because they've got feathered edges so if i zoom right in you can see what i mean see how the black feathers into the into the uh, color okay so what i want to do now what i'm going to get you to do now is Everything is going well. That's that's how I want it to be. What I'm going to do is go up to edit and preferences. Okay, so every and this window will come up, and I want you to select tool options and put a a, a little cross in this box. Move tools, tool options, and then that little box. Now. I better put a line on that so you can see it. This is tool options, edit preferences, and then you need to put a little tick in that box there. Okay, if you've got this little cross here selected, you can just click on things and uh, it will um, select the uh, uh, layer for you. Just makes it a bit easier to work, to use. So if I'm in this one, this move tool up here, I then can select it and I can it will stay selected over in the layers. So it gives me the chance to just grab it and move it around and put it wherever I want. Okay. So I'm going to scale my little animal and I'm going to make him a bit smaller in relation to my picture. I prefer myself, when I've selected it, I prefer to use this scale tool. And the reason being, I can do that. Scale. Select scale. Oops, too much. Okay, scale. This tool here is in when you hold it down. Mostly, I oh know this the common one that's there. Um, uh, that's the scale tool. And then you can put your little, use the, the move tool, this one, and you can put him wherever you like. Okay. And I might rotate him a little bit. Okay, so he sits on Paul's shoulder. There you go. Now, Paul has a little pet 